Hello, dear friends. Today, I want to talk about common mistakes that students make when they just start learning neurographic and neuro art. So mistake number one is neurographic line. What I see when people start learning, they really kind of like getting in the rush mode to draw a line. And in a lot of cases, we see the line drawn like this, okay, or like that. People just draw it like this, or they draw it this way, long curves with a lot of uh, movement around. Um, I must say that none of them are correct. So when you start drawing neurographic, you really need to pay attention how you draw your line. And let me show you the correct way of doing it. When you draw your graphic line, you really need to draw it with control. Your attention need to be on the tip of the marker, okay? And when you start drawing, you basically think about nature, think about branches of a tree, or think about waves in ocean, think about totally organic uh, patterns that we see when we are flying a plane. You see the curves are not too curvy. You don't see any spikes in the line. And um, it's important to draw it with control slowly, no rush, no rush. And look, I'm not even creating repetitive patterns here. And that's the whole idea of the line, not to create a repetitive pattern. The line goes where we don't expect it to see. What does it mean? That means we never know where and where the line is gonna end. So we start, we breathe through the process and uh, we stop here. But the whole idea is a meditative approach to the line. You don't create any repetitive pattern. You breathe through the process while you drawing, okay? No spikes, no rush, breathe, and you go slow, okay? So this is number one. Now let's talk about the second mistake that uh, students make when they start. And we're gonna be talking about rounding, okay? When it comes to rounding, let's say you have a crossing here. The correct way to do rounding is to create first the circle shape and fill it up with color. Okay, that's the idea. What I see people doing, let's say you have here another crossing, Instead of doing that, that's what I see. Other way around, it doesn't go inside, right? The shape that they put in, it just goes like this and then they color. This is a wrong way of coloring. And uh, I mean, the drawing, the rounding, the rounding technique is this. This is the correct way of doing it. Another mistake that I see when uh, people work on rounding, uh, they don't pay attention to uh, those end points of the rounding, okay? And people just go like this, making square and doing like this, okay? It doesn't look accurate, it looks messy, right? There is a way to correct situation like this. I mean, you still can make it circular, thicken the line, Okay, thicken the line and color it. But still, it's not very pretty, but close to this, right? So please be sure when you rounding the crossings, be very precise, right? Don't do this shape, don't do this rectangular shape. Um, don't just try, some people like they get tired, they do this. This is not rounding. Uh, so pay attention to this and try to round this way, whatever I'm showing in the middle. Okay, so the next one 
shapes. When we talk about shapes, we want to be as precise as possible. It takes time to master, right? When you draw a circle, we will need to try to draw it as closer to circle shape as possible. It's not going to be 100% circular anyway, okay? But as close as possible. What I see, people think they can do whatever they want and they create these shapes or egg like shapes, okay? No, the shape should be as close to circle as possible because this way you're really ruining your work. Uh, you're not really fulfilling the purpose. When we're doing just new art, with no mindfulness attached, maybe it's okay. But when you do your mindful work, when you're working on the issue or problem, try to get to the correct shape. Same applies uh, to a square. Try to make a shape as close to square as possible, okay? Again, not 100%, but try. Some people don't pay attention and they do it just like that this rectangle shape, or they don't even pay attention and the shape can come up like this. This is incorrect. This, that, this is incorrect, this incorrect. This one is correct. This is correct, okay? And the same way triangles, right? Triangles, try to make them as triangular as possible. Messy triangles like this, they don't look good, okay? There is a way to correct it though. Like you can really add straight lines here, make a corrections and put neurographic line around it. That would definitely help, okay? But that would be the correct shape, okay? So the next one is coloring. And uh, I want to show you two mistakes that people make when they color. Um, uh, just, um, uh, all right. So let's just pretend, right? You have a neurographic catharsis, right? You round it well, everything looks good. So you've done your rounding here. Let me just do basic rounding. Quickly. So we have something to work from. Okay, so what I see people do when they color, they create mosaic. Let me just finish and I'll show you what I mean. People tend to create mosaic. So they take one pencil, they color one segment, okay? Then they take another color, they color in another segment. Then the third one using different color again. So when you color like this, you disintegrating the components of the drawing, okay? It may look pretty when you do uh, stained glass, right? But when you work in a neurographic drawing, you really want to unite components under one color. And if you use color in one place, then you have to use the color in another place of the drawing. I can show you the correct way of drawing using my, um, my drawings. Like take a look here. The large components are colored in one color. Here is another component colored in pink, component colored in um, green, right? Then yellow. In Neurographica, we don't like this mosaic when you are uh, creating totally disintegrated um, picture. It's another one, right? When you draw circles, right? You can see the multiple components of the drawing are united into one using the color. Like you, you can see the circular shape here in green, here you can see the orange color, 
yellow and so forth. There's another drawing. You could see also components, the pinky and um, the green parts and yellow parts, open parts, doesn't matter, but it has to look integrated. If I would color each component into different color, it would look like mosaic with no meaning. Integration is very important part of Nera Graphica. Like this one, for example, my uh, tropical fish that I came up with, um, look at the, how it is colored, right? Like the huge component colors in one color, then I have the other one. You can add the color accent, which is fine. It's like kind of like creating shading, but it's still orange, right? With some shading you can see here. All right, so I hope it is clear. So this is the wrong way of coloring. Another mistake that people make, let me show you right here. They do this. They color in one color, one component of the drawing. You see, there is no line here. There is no marker. They take next color. And I'm just picking random colors because I wanted to make it visible. And then they take next color. This is very, very wrong. We should never color like this in Nera Graphica. Unless you do neuro art, then even in your art, I would not allow myself to do anything like that because even in your art, we need to stick with principles of Nera Graphica and integration points. When you color this way, uh, it, it is a point of disintegration, no better than here, right? If you take a component, you have to color in one color, you can add another accent or add another color on top of that, but you need to unite components of the drawing under one color. And if you add accent somewhere, add it somewhere else. So this is the wrong way of coloring. The way you should color, let me take another pencil so I can show you. You really need to take several components and those are components. This um, space is separated by the marker and you unite them under one color. This would be the right way of doing it. Then you can add another color on top of that or accent color or anything like that, but never this or that when you see totally separated pieces that don't make any sense. I hope it's helpful. And that would be coloring problem number one, coloring problem number two. Altogether, we have five issues that we covered today. I hope it's gonna help you in your neurographic experience, your neurographic drawing. And thank you for watching. Please join my group on Facebook. All information is in the description. Subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you next week, my next lesson. Thank you so much.